Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning, favorite day, because uh, most of like the chaos of the week has like finished any parts and things that I've had to get in and it's all sorted out. I can start to, I guess, enjoy uh, this, this uh, life, I suppose. So I'm gonna break this video into two parts. One is what's happening with the car and some new Y62 stuff. The second part is about 4x4 DNA, uh, a little bit about dash off-road and I'm using my GoPro with uh, media mod today, so hopefully this is gonna help with the audio and the wind that's happening. All right, so let's look at the car first. First thing to talk about here is the flares. That's been the latest mod here. Um, so these are the extreme flares and they do stick out uh, a fair bit more than the slimline. If we said the slimlines were, I don't know, 12, 15 mil, these are more like 40 mil. So, um, I know a lot of people have been seeing the pictures and uh, want to see what it looks like from you know the side and everything. I quite like how it lines up with the rear bar here. This rear bar pops out a little bit compared to like the Razzler Kmars, but I think that suits a flare very well. Um, they are a bit extreme, and some people have said they don't like the bolts, but I I quite do like the bolts. Maybe um, uh, you know if I blacken them out. But that's what's happening, and to cut it around the snorkel is an absolute pain, but possible. Um, so there's a little rubber lip that comes with it, and you can you can do that too. Snorkel. Let's talk about that, hey. I've moved to the other side of the car because there's a bit of wind, and hopefully audio is more important. Seeing the picture of the snorkel right now, but I've been pretty anti-snorkel for oh, ever. Um, it's a petrol. What do I need a snorkel for? But, but. I've been noticing, because every time we take a car to the dyno now, we change the air filter, just to make sure we get the, the best results. And every car's got um, dirty air filters pretty much all the time. I think that's almost like a 10,000K, just change air filter, because you instantly feel a power gain and uh, a fuel improvement too. So I'm gonna start doing that a bit more often. But uh, every trip that I come back from, my air filter is full of sand and rubbish. So. I'm going to try and do this snorkel thing and um, and I know, I know that uh, when dynoing these cars they tend to run out of air before they run out of fuel so the more air you can get in there uh, the better and we've done dynos before and after snorkels and on the same car you know a couple of days apart and we're getting about an eight kilowatt gain by putting a snorkel on so there's a lot of things there that kind of says snorkels annoyingly are a good idea and i hate the look of them i must admit i don't like any of them but um it's kind of a necessary evil which leads into the next bit of news and something else that i've been fighting against for years saying it's not necessary but it is very important and about to happen in my life and i put a post up earlier h is for some people got the answer right H is for Harrop. So, see the smile? <laughs> it's on order. There's one, there's actually three coming, but there's one coming for this car. Um, we're a Harrop dealer now. And how it happened is we had a few cars come through um, uh, 4x4 DNA, and uh, it was Charlie's big car, heavy, and it really improved it. Um, but we also had another car, Wayne's, come through, which was a Series 4 on. Um, uh, 33s just stock tires and that's the one that really did it for me because I took it for a drive beforehand it was good it actually dynoed at 220 at the rear wheels to start with and after the blower it dynoed at 284 or something and wow wow the thing is like it's, it was the 2300 um, but at like first gear just squeezing that throttle for the first time and you only get this experience once. It's like the, the wow, like, oh my God, this is like so much power. <laughs> and then you've got to quickly change at about um, four and a half thousand um, for the trans to catch up and actually make the gear change in a second by the time it gets to 6,000. And oh my God, and the noise, the wind, the, the, you know, sounds like you're pulling the tail of a cat or something. Um, it, some people might not like that sound, but it's like it's addictive. Now, and ever since I've driven that car, and I've only driven it twice, around the block, 
but ever since I've driven that car, I hop in my car and it's like, uh, I'm missing something. It's a, it's totally addictive, and like you can't think about anything else now except that that massive amount of power but, and the sound. Um, and I can, Charlie's had a snorkel on it, and that induction sound through the snorkel. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm like <laughs> really liking the induction sound without the supercharger, but with a supercharger, oh my god! So it, it's a wait for all these things. So it's a six-week wait. We've ordered. One for this car, uh, one for a customer, and one for stock. So it's gonna be something we put on the website too and hopefully have stock of. So if people want one, they can just go and get it. Because stock is king in 2021. Uh, if you don't have stock, you don't do business. So we're just gonna, huge investment, but we're gonna try and stock Arab superchargers. All right, a couple of other things and I'll talk to you about that, that um, the four x four DNA stuff. So, um, uh, roof racks are going well. We're getting into roof rack accessories, so um, there's going to be uh, Max Tracks. Can't see the screen. This is a new, <laughs> it's like a Batman symbol, but this is going to be a dash Max Tracks holder if you want to put that flat on your roof. Um, so you get two of them with the pins, um, and there'll be another sort of dash uh, roof rack shovel holder, one so you can have it on an angle. And oh, I don't know if you saw in my car, I'm testing another type of Max Track holder too. Let's give you a quick look over there. So this will be another one we're doing. But it's all it's all happening, put it that way. Next, turn the lights on. Just opening up here in the morning before everyone else gets in and work starts. Go up to the mezzanine because I'm going to show you some stuff up here. Next is about the, the, I guess the dash and DNA kind of thing, because it was, Matt messaged me yesterday um, with a Facebook memory saying, um, it came up on his Facebook, three years since he announced Dash Off Road, um, like officially launched on, on Facebook. And wow, that's like, I can't believe it's been three years and so much has happened in that three years. Like so much has happened in that three years. Uh, it's gone from being a little tiny company that found a, a, a bar that people liked to um, a, a warehouse full of stock. We're employing people, we're trying to employ more people. Um, we launched DNA officially in 4x4 DNA, which is like a, a parts installation business in um, March this year. Uh, moved from Steve Allen's mechanical, we are working out of there, to uh, Eddie here. Um, at Edinburgh. Um, we thought this place was enormous. Turns out it's way too small for us. We've tried to hire, uh, rent the uh, other units at, at this end, therefore can't get them. Uh, there's another building next to us we're trying to rent, can't get that one. And it's, it's just gone berserk. And what surprised me though is if we wind back to when we started this in Oh, I guess we're doing bits and pieces with Steve Allen um, last year. And we had this guy Steve from Alice Springs, you'll know who you are, V8 mate. Um, he, he put this car in for us to do some work at, on at Steve Allen's from, but he was from Northern Territory, Alice Springs. And if you're wondering what I'm doing so I can frame myself, I have to keep <laughs> refreshing the screen. Um, very poor YouTubing, I know. But um, this guy, I was blown away. He was prepared to put his car on a truck from Alice Springs to Adelaide to get us to work on it. Mind blowing. And then like a couple of months later, we had one from um, Darwin, Rob. He brought his car down and we're thinking, I can't believe, like I know we're passionate about Y62 patrols, but I can't believe people would put their car on a truck, send it to us for to work on it, and then put it on a truck and send it back. Insane. Um, so fast forward, getting to Eddie now, um, it was at the point where basically one car a month was coming from interstate somewhere. And uh, I, you know, basically one in four cars, really we were doing one car a week back then. Um, fast forward now, we are at a point where um, Steve's working here um, probably about 50% of his time. And, and we've got Carl who's our other amazing fitter. 
and so we're doing about one and a half to two cars a week but one in two cars now is from interstate and I can see what's happening this is going to tip to the point where we're going to do more interstate work than South Australian work which again just blows my mind people like are prepared to put their car on a truck send it over here we build it and we set it back I'm still getting my head around that but we do give absolute care to every car that comes in but like we want to make sure that these cars are perfect absolutely perfect as they're all out the door can't be a single flaw or a fault because um, that just causes warranty issues and that's hard to do when you're in state so we are very meticulous about what we do with these cars next is managing it oh my god so i should turn this um board around here We've, there's, there's a, a whole if anyone's booked in with us you would have spoken to sharon sharon manages um, all the parts and we're actually trying to hire someone else to help manage the parts because it's become more than a one person job and, and she's got an excel spreadsheet with like every build down one column and then time across the other column um just a, a gantt chart and it's it's um very methodical the way all the parts arrive here on time ready for the build to be taken out to the fitters and and off we go <laughs> and then we've got like a, a whiteboard up here um where can we see it? I don't know if you can see it here. So this has got this is for next week, for example. We've got every day, we've got every hoist, what's going on, what hoist, when, because of course you need a two-poster to do suspension, uh, preferably a four-poster to do say a, a, a rear tank or something like that. And it's a full matrix of getting the right job on the right hoist at the right time, not to block anything up and get the workflow right. So everything has to work perfectly. And if you're thinking about putting a four-wheel drive shop together, we've got one two-poster and um, two four-posters. It's not enough. You need at least two two-posters. And you need, the thing is you need four-posters too. So you need, I think, four hoists at a minimum to start a shop. So we're going to um, probably put another two-poster in the dash side. Because next week is what we're calling Super 62 Week. And I don't know if this is an announcement, but it's a it's a big deal for us. Um, Super 62 week is a test. Uh, we've been all our overflow work. We've been sending up to Steve Allen's because those guys have been working on 62s for some time now. They know the car as well. So um, we do accessory fitting here, mechanical up at Steve Allen's mechanical in Virginia. We're at a point where the two need to merge. So we're trialing it next week. Super 62 week, we've got four guys on tools. <laughs> One poor guy's gonna have to be on a driveway, so he's doing electrical. Don't really need a hoist for that. Uh, but we're gonna have basically four cars being built on all at the same time throughout the week. And we're pumping, yeah, four, four positions, four hoists. So there'll be cars on, off, on, off, all day, five days, and we're gonna see if we don't kill each other. <laughs> I think we'll be all right but it's gonna be the most intense, insane, busy week we have ever had. So if you ring and don't answer the phone next week, my apologies. Although you're gonna see this in hindsight, we'll be uh, a week into it by the time you see this video. If this goes well, then we need to make the leap for Steve and his whole team at Virginia to come down here and we can have some synergy and be one and do both um, fitting and mechanical. Uh, and that's gonna be huge we're going to be flat out but i think um that's when four by four dna sort of goes to that next level we'll have the we'll have the people um we'll have an extra person on in the office as well and that is when this goes from being like a small full drive shop to we're really gonna hit our marks then it's kind of scary <laughs> so that's that's kind of where where we're at with um, uh, Dash Off Road and 4x4 DNA, I can't believe how much has happened in three short years. From working full time for an employer, quitting my job, coming across, Sharon quitting her job, and then now Steve moving away from his mechanical business in Virginia and uh, moving that work down here as well. It's some um, exciting stuff. <laughs> So, and I, I want to thank all of you guys for coming along for the journey because, you know, YouTube is a massive part of how this all happened. It's the fuel that, um, uh, you know, feeds the fire. 
Um, so I can't thank all of you guys on, on Facebook and YouTube enough for, for helping us along with our sort of dream and, and journey. Right, oh, that's enough waffle. There's heaps more to talk about, so we'll get into that on the next video next week. Thank you again for watching. Um, another Dash Off Road video. Yeah, yeah.